You're listening to The Word on the Streets with Joe Bingham, Jason Tasker, and Raj Pujada. Yo, welcome back to The Word on the Streets. I'm here with my comrades. I've never said that word before. Yeah, I like, I like the little bit of spice you put on it. Though, for yeah, comrades. comrades. Yeah. How do you say it? I think it's like a, a Russian thing. Comrades. comrades. You just said it the exact same way. It was, it was good though. It was good. I don't mind it. Comrades. It's a f- Keep saying it. It's kind of fucked up word. Comrades. Comrades. Is that how you say it? Comrade. Comrade. Yeah. Is it Russian? I think they it just call everyone Russian. comrade. Oh. Anyway, good to be back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> An efficient start, that's all. Yeah, it it's usually just me fucking confused, isn't it? Yeah. What's the crack? Well, what's the crack with you? You've been you've I've been, been abroad, mate. Been abroad. So your hotel looked nice. Fucking hell. It was a palaver, mate. All of it. Why? Actually, I, I was a little offended. I don't know why. I took it personal. But the plane was sold out. But my two seats were empty next to me. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I don't know why. So two, be, two people looked down the aisle and went, and went oh, I'll get the next one. Yeah, basically looked like it, yeah. Mad. So it was just me, Just I slept the whole way out there. That was beautiful. Do you take up the whole all the three seats then? No, I didn't. some <laughs> random woman did sit with me after. Oh, and I, I thought you would have lied down, that's what I was. As thought. I was moving, it's only an hour flight, as oh. I was moving to the middle seat, because I thought, mm. oh, I'll sit in the middle, like I ain't got nothing, I'll just sit in the middle, more space. And then uh, she came over and sat with me. She was cool though. Oh, yeah, uh, a little chat her in that. Nah, she's reading that book. Okay. Yeah, I spoke to a lot of random people. I just started conversations with people that didn't want to talk to me. Well, anyway. not, not on the plane. Uh, on the way back, yeah. What? Yeah. Why? I didn't know. I was just by myself for three days in another country, so I just talked to anyone that I could. You got no headphones? No. What? I gave them away. For what? Someone needed them, and I was like, "Oh yeah, I don't really use them." Then I went to go buy some, yeah, and it was Black Friday in Apple, and they were like, oh, if you buy one nine nine, you get a forty pound voucher. So I thought, oh cool, I'll buy the headphones, and I used the forty pound voucher to get all the new wires because you change the fucking bottom of the phone. And then the day I went to go do that, the deal had ended. So out of spite, I didn't buy any. <laughs> were you buying? <laughs> were you buying wired headphones for? No wireless. He wants the new. He wants the new AirPod oh. Pro Maxes, and I know that because while we were in America, he took me into every Apple store we walked past to what? check if they were the same price in every store, which they obviously were, <laughs> uh, and then didn't buy any of them. See so if there's one special happened. Apple discount. Uh, no, nah, I and now nah, I just want the in ear ones. I think. Yeah, they are easier. Yeah. Oh, you want the big ones that go the cans? Uh, mm. Yeah, I wanted the cans. Yeah, I quite but like them. They're quite heavy though. No, but when tall. I when I spoke to them, they were like. They're, nah, you're better off getting the new pros because of the, they got that thing where they like lower in volume and shit when you're talking to someone, and you can basically just have them in your ear at all times. Yeah, I talk to people the noise cancellation thing, and then if you start talking to someone like in a shop or something, it just goes to like transparency. Mode yeah, but what if someone's like if you're in a busy train station? This is why I asked him. Doesn't ha- doesn't happen then? Okay, yeah. interesting. So it's when someone's directly talking to you. Yeah, well, I think when you're talking to them, yeah. Oh, right, 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 right. So you'd have to say, what did you say for it to go down? Yeah, they're not very good for talking to people on the phone, though. No, they're terrible. I'm constantly just talking to people when I'm walking or something, and I'll just get, what? What? Yeah. What? So that's why I just don't know. Yeah, I just want it for music. Uh, And I don't mind wired headphones, actually. I don't have a problem with them. I don't like wires in general. Mm. Everything, I just, yeah, anything, keyboard, mouse, headphones... I must use wires for. I get what you mean because the thing that used to piss me off with wired headphones was like when it catches on like a door handle or something, and you just get fucking yanked. But it uh, don't it, it just come out your ear. Nah, I used to proper wedge them in. You know what I mean for maximum yeah, uh, volume. Like just... But I, uh, I I do miss wired stuff because I, I just I'm sick of having so much shit to charge all the fucking time. That is a ball lake. And I'll it's replaced it. one ball lake with another, hasn't it? Because then when it does run out of charge, you get annoyed. But can't can't you charge it off the back of the iPhone? No. That's not how like, you do the Samsungs. You put the Samsung headphones on the back of your phone. You've also got it? like a charging... I've also got a shit iPhone. Well. Just that... a case. So who was your favourite person that you spoke to on the plane back now? I, did, um, I didn't speak to any... Uh, I spoke to one guy on the plane back. 
uh, I had an argument with one woman on the escalator. But you know one of them where you're just thinking about it for ages after? My flight was delayed on the way back by an hour, right? Mm. And uh, the tra- I didn't know there was a rail strike. What, back here? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I had to get someone to come get me. So I'm like rushing because I'm thinking, oh, like, I'm paying for the parking. So let me fucking get out of here quick. You come down the escalator and obviously everyone stands to the right. But this one woman refused to move. Like, so she stood in front of me and I didn't, I didn't say a word. I was like, oh, it's, we're going to get to the bottom. I just stood right behind her. And as I, as I walked off the escalator, I just heard her go, some people can't wait. And I was like, and I took like four steps and I was like, no, I'm not going to let it slide. I'm not going to let it slide. I turned around and I went, well, it'd be easier if you stood on the right fucking side of the escalator. And she just went, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's even... And I turned around and walked off because I was in a rush. But the whole journey home, I was, the, I'm was i still thinking about that's it. That's quite a good response because it's one of those it's where dismissive, it's isn't dismissive. It? It's like, you don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. I, and then <sighs> I got home. Me. I got home and she was with her man, right? I got home and I was like, you should have said, control your mum. Like that would have got her because she, <laughs> you know, because she's not old, right? But she, yeah, she would have thought about how old she is. I was like, oh, I could have said so much. I had the same thing though. It was the last time I was... Uh... Like she doesn't even think about me now. No. <laughs> no but I had it even... when I got back to, last time I got back to Stansted. And it was like, as soon as I got back to Stansted, I was immediately like, oh yeah, I fucking hate everyone in this city. Everyone, because yeah. the, the, the rules are all out the window again. It's like everyone just forgets how to fucking function. Like, all you want to do is get off the flight, get your bag and fuck off, in it? And everyone's just, like, dragging their feet or, like, turning around to look for everyone in their group. Like, there's only one direction you can go. Yeah. Like, it just pisses me off that people are just in the way. And now we've got fucking Christmas tourists in London and they're all cunts because they come down here. And the, but the problem is, this is my issue now. I've lived here for four years and it's so I'm part of the fucking London problem that all these people come down for a day trip and don't know how to act. They fucking the one that got me was the central line's been fucked for like about a week or two. And I got on it uh, the other weekend, and they were like, "Yeah, mad delays because of train shortages or whatever." So it's already busy, isn't it? But then we get to Hobart, and there's all these fucking tourists just cramming onto the tube, pressing everyone up against the wall. But they're all giggling like, "Oh, it's part of the experience, isn't it?" No, it's not. Fucking wait for the next one, you prick. Yeah, hate them. Are you on the train already? Yeah. Mate, yesterday, I fucking, I was telling him earlier, because of the rail strikes, and I had to come back from Manchester. Uh, it was six six hours door to door. Mate, I was in the airport. I know, I left my hotel at 10 a.m. I got my flight at 10 p.m. Yeah, that's a joke. But I think airport's a bit different. Manchester to London is a two hour, 10 minute train. Yeah. Six hours door to door. Yeah. That's long. And Obviously I, I was in the lounge and stuff. So yeah, it's not yeah living, you know what I mean? Whereas me, <laughs> I, I was sat I was sat in a fucking random chair on, from a train that was going to Reading. And then when we got to Reading, pff, I thought you're like- just bailed, man, brother, to come get you. Nah, it was like chilling with your lap, bro. People, people were trying <laughs> to cling to the side of the train, bro, because it was like the, the last one that was going to London. I didn't drive to Manchester. People were scrapping, trying to get on the train and all sorts, man. Right. Yeah, it's feral. Do you, uh, do you back the people striking? No. Nah. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Don't they always get what they want? Mate, so I what feel like they, get, they, get, they, get, they get paid a wedge. I feel like it's no, industrial no, no. action every fucking week. But, but, but they, they strike and then they, what, they get what they want, yeah? So what are they striking again for? To get more of what they want. I just think fucking sack them. Because as soon as you say to them, listen, yo, you don't want to work? Cool, P45. They'll be like, well, actually, let's not fucking overreact here. Someone else will have the job. Bro, someone else will have that job in a heartbeat. Yeah, like a computer. No, I like wouldn't a, want another a computer human. driving my train. Oh, okay. Like another human Why would not? go, oh, 50 grand, I'll do that. What, well, they it's for play at the that. airport. How do you get on with those? Do you know at the airport, though? Oh, I did fine this time, but I was panicking a little bit. Hmm. Um, I don't tend to get on well in airports anyway, so... But how do you find the... Yeah, easy. Yeah. Some people struggle with that, don't yeah, they? Yeah. The, uh, what do you call well? it? The biometric. biometric scanner. People yeah. really struggle with that. And anytime I get in a lane, guaranteed, I'm always stuck behind the one it's, you know what it person. Is? And I'm sorry, because you both got one of these, or you know some old white people 
in the airport do my fucking nothing, bro. <laughs> we're putting it in like backwards, nah, and then nah, we're expecting. We're queuing up for the e gate. She's like, "Oh, is this the new e gate?" And then the husband will be it's like, "Literally been here ten years." Yes, yeah, new e gate. Oh, why they call it the e gate? I agree, Fuck off! I agree to I agree to a point, but I will say as well, old white people are mad efficient. Like they they go through airports and shit. So like, the majority of them, I think, like they're working for MI5. Like they got everything that they need laid out. My issue in that white sleeve. Yeah, yeah. And my issue is, and this was partly fueled by, well, mainly fueled by the train journey yesterday. Old white people have too much fucking confidence these days, and I don't like it because the both the people that pissed me off on the trains the most yesterday is again. I didn't have a seat from Manchester until I got to Birmingham, basically, because it was just rammed. So I'm just stood by the fucking door in this one carriage. And then, you know, it, I got my headphones in and I still hear just right over my shoulder. Any movement down the carriage, people trying to get on. I just turned around and just went, now nah, I'm just standing here for a laugh, is it? <laughs> and she looks at me like I'm the dickhead. I'm was like, she Where? working? No, nah, oh. she just wanted to get on the train. And I'm like, what? You think we're just fucking pressed against the door for a laugh, but there's actually seats in there? You didn't Fuck say it, her. did you? Did you say it? I just said to her, no. nah, I'm just standing there for a laugh, innit? And she looked at me like I was a knob. And then presses on anyway, but doesn't take a fucking backpack off, yeah. the old bitch. Now, so that pissed me off. Too much confidence, because then the same thing happened. We got on the Elizabeth line. Next two old people, get on. Can we move down the carriage, please? Again, it's to where? To where? And you know what? Because of, that, because of the year that we're in now, you didn't fight in the war either, so fuck off. <laughs> that... <laughs> Go away. <laughs> you didn't fight in the war and you haven't taken your backpack off. You know what I mean? Fuck him. Nah, the guy behind me on the plane as well. Like, sometimes you just, they just chat shit. Yeah. Like, we got obviously snowing, right? So you've got to de-ice the plane, right? Running fucking commentary. Like, shut the fuck up. We've all just been delayed for how long? You want to tell your wife that there's steam in the plane? Shut up. It's the ones... And then he watched fucking videos. The no whole headphones. flight. Back. Remember that geezer on the flight New York to LA, and he was sat right fucking next to me, and he would just he just watched TikToks the whole flight with no headphones in. Mate, I, where I was where? Fucking prick on the flight from New York to LA. Remember, I kept saying this dickhead still ain't got his headphones in. Why didn't you say something? Yeah, I, I just didn't see the point. Uh, I, kept, I'm, I, kept, I'm I kept pointing now. it out to you, and you were like, "Oh, I can't tell." Yeah, and I'm, then I'm at deaf. the end of the flight, you turned around and you went, "Oh yeah, my man." No, I thought I could hear something. Yeah. I must have mentioned it to you about six times, but I was saying it loud, innit? And he was sat there. I was like, this guy still ain't got any headphones in. And he was oblivious. He looked like a hippie as well. Like, he wouldn't have given a shit. No, I'd have taken his phone off him. Yeah? I'd have just gone, whoop, you can have that back when we land. That's what I told you. <laughs> Same when they have kids playing on the iPads. And not, I don't kids, know. I can forgive. Fuck no. the kids. No, because it's still the parents. No, not it's literally. Still the, it's still the parents' responsibility. It is. Like, you know what I mean? That's so why kids are dickheads, You man. can't put headphones in a kid, though, innit? You can put them on them. Yeah. Of course you can. Put them over the over the ear ones. Just do some yeah. shit. You can't just leave them there, just pressing loads of buttons on yeah. games. Give them a Valium. Fuck him. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, there was whiskey, one woman whiskey on a thimble. <laughs> the whole flight with her baby up and down the aisle, and they're trying to bring the carts down, and she's just boom walking up and down. The baby, I feel sorry for because you can't reason with a baby. Yeah, but like a kid, you Hang can you can, you can just be like, shut up. That's yeah. what my mum used to do back in the day. Oh. She'd be, if I was annoying everyone, she'd be like, just shut the fuck up. Yeah. What, uh, what about this is about the smelly people on planes? Yeah, I've never had that experience. Mate, on I've the never, way back from Miami, the the guy, this guy who was sat next to us, and he, was, he wasn't even sat directly next to us. He was sat in like the aisle and then the next seat. And as soon as I walked on the plane, you know, when something like hits you, I was like, fuck, that's intense. Yeah. And then I realised we were sat in the two seats next to him oh. and literally any time I was just praying to God throughout the whole flight any time he lifted his arm up he was a it was a hefty guy like yeah. big and hefty and any time he you, lifted his were arm you next to him no I was even I was one in as well but mate I was having to put I was going to go like that I was to go like that and any time he lifted I was nearly vomiting and it was that strong like, yeah. what do you what do you do what do you what do you say do you do you say, so, say sorry, do you say sir. to someone you I fucking say, stink so, sorry sir do you have any deodorant yeah i understand yeah i understand no it was on the way to miami actually i understand i think it was a, it was german because i just i followed him out after just to check his passport no i didn't really but he was fucking hooked no, after i heard him ta- i heard him talking to his musk? mates um yeah but it, it it's works one, it's one of those i understand i understand if you've got like a purse like some kind of body odor issue that happens take some fucking tablets sort it out 
but this guy clearly and it's just did it just smell not stale? washed yeah it's just not washed that is unforgivable Oh, the screen turned off and I shit myself, my bad. I <laughs> thought it was. Nah, I guess I, I usually get like bare smelly people on the tube and on the train and that. I've never had it on a plane though. Nah, never on a plane. We, so, all right, would you rather, yeah, mm. sit on a 12 hour flight? Yeah, I don't know where 12 hour flights go, but a 12 hour flight next to someone who stinks or you have to stand. For the entire twelve-hour flight, are you allowed to? Wear, you're you not allowed, allowed to, to lean. You're not allowed to lean. Nothing. Are you, are you allowed to wear perfume? Uh, are or, you allowed to wear perfume? Yeah, but it's a very overpowering smell. If I have perfume on now, but I stink, it's not going to work. You wear, after, you wear aftershave, but it didn't help with my man, didn't it? No, it didn't. It would. It was. It was like a battle between odor and parfum. Mm. And okay, uh, okay. Wait, here's the question. Yeah, um, sit next to the smelly man. It's always going to be a man, and let's be honest, smelly man, or stand. Can't hold anything. Can't lean on anything for twelve hour flight. Yeah, can I walk up and down? Yeah, um, but you can sit down. And not have the smell if you lick his armpit once. I think I'll just sit next to the stinking geezer, you know, because I'm just lazy. (laughs) But I hate having to stand on trains and everything. Like, I had to stand the whole way here on the tube, and that that was like less, that was like half an hour. Yeah, I think we are a nation of sitters. Yeah, that pissed me off. But I do think that I would. Do you think we should do an episode stood up once? I think think we might get more energy. Maybe we do the next. In offices and Yeah, Yeah. the stand, uh, uh, we could call it something. We could have a standing episode for Standard. the patrons. How do you... If someone's humming that bad then, yeah, to the point yeah, where yeah. you're like, I've got to tell them. Like, it how might do, be... How do you tell them? It might be vom, vom level yeah. smell, yeah. Yeah, and it does... Like, I'm... That you could end it if you smell. lick it. That's what it was like. It was like, literally, like, so intensely overpowering that it was making me want want to... And how long, how long is the flight from Miami? It was like... Eight, eight, eight hours, hours or something yeah. like that. I ain't like... I'm snitching. I'm snitching and hoping for a first... First class upgrade. What you just got? This Donny's humming. Yeah, I'll go to the back. I'll take a slash. Make sure it's not me that stinks. He was getting close to that. Yeah. You know you got to check in it. You got to check it's not you. You got to get it. Are you yeah. one of them ones? Nah, that's the thing. You, you know if it's you though. Nah, but you know how you become accustomed to like you know the old cup yeah. of yeah, fart. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. One. Yeah. Still, you, do, do, do you have a cup of fart? And nah, you've some, never cupped you, a fart. You get it in the covers sometimes. Yeah, and then you. I don't cup it. Oh, yeah, that's often. a bit of me. That is. Yeah. That's a bit of that sweet chili chicken. I've done it before. <laughs> like when, like back in the day, you'd be in a club and someone was stinking, and you would kind of do the old like just to make sure that it, you weren't. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's always the same type of person. It's always the one. You, yeah, you always like he's got a short sleeve shirt on. Yeah. Yeah, it's always that guy. The problem was for and me. He's though, wearing jeans with loafers. It's always yeah. that brother. Used to, the, the, the shirt used to be white, but now it's a bit grey. <laughs> oh. Yeah, my man, my it's mate. Always that yeah, Donny. Yeah, yeah. Fuck it out. And the problem is, he's like at, at the same time as well. Like back in the day as well. Like he'd, he'd kind of stink. Like he's tried to mask it with like Versace blue jeans yeah, or something, yeah, yeah. but it's not worked. It's not worked at all. But yeah, you say it to your boy, like, bro, that guy's ponging. And everyone will go and just confirm it as well. <laughs> They'll all go, fucking hell. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The issue that I had on the plane, though, was I was in the front row where you get extra leg room. So I oh. didn't want to move because I was like, yeah, but if I move, then it will be a problem got, for me. What if you got bumped up? Because you, could, you nice. paid for that seat, right? You paid more for that seat? No, we just got to look at the draw. Oh, right, right, right. I've only ever been bumped up once on a flight when I was a kid. and we were go- I can't remember where we were going to. But we got on the flight and our whole row of seats were gone. Not just no seats. The, the, <laughs> like the, this is gonna be a, this is gonna be your standing yeah, flight. Like mad, like the, the 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 metal like frame was there, but no seats. And my mom, like, I knew we were on a budget. But oh, you, yeah. know, you know what happened? There, yeah, my right? mom was like, "What? What's going on here?" And they just went, "Oh yeah, sorry about that. Someone threw up all yeah, over yeah. them on the last flight, so we had to rip the chairs out so you can just sit at the front." Yeah. Oh, we so that happened on the way back from Switzerland, right? Mm. No, no, no one threw up on the plane, right? But I'm sat on this chair and this this air host, air host, air steward mm. comes up and he's like, looks like a hybrid Declan Rice, Jack Grealish, right? Okay. If they fucked and had a kid, that is that what guy airline? from EasyJet. Swiss Air? EasyJet. Oh, okay. Right. And he goes, uh, 
is your seat pattern different to everyone else's? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> and he goes, okay, cool. And walked off. I was like, bro, come back here, man. <laughs> what am I sitting on? And he goes, oh, nothing. Someone spilt Coke earlier on the seat. But you're right. You know, sometimes it's vomit or shit. And I was like, it, did he lie to me? Am I, I was sitting say, in shit right that. now? Yeah. You think I'm sitting in shit? Yeah. Coke. Yeah, you're not. You, you're just wiping that that seat down if it's coke. Because they're leather chairs on these. No, they're well, not. Not this one. It's fabric. Is it bus yeah. seats? Yeah, this is the old plane. Okay. Yeah. Propellers and that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, they were steaming it earlier. <laughs> <laughs> steaming the dehydrated it. That's to get someone outside just to <laughs> swing the propeller out. It's a man off. that's just on the luggage just <laughs> scraping the windscreen on Raj's fucking flight. <laughs> With that geezer behind him going, yeah, now nah, he's doing his best. He's doing his best. They're the worst as well, though. The ones who do the running commentary when they're trying to guess like what's happened. Yeah, yeah. They piss me off as well. Like if a train gets stopped somewhere and someone's just trying to guess like what the problem is and how long it, you know, that's you not know, really the like, people that work there now isn't it who do oh, that but it's the ones that they're like yeah it should, should be moving in a minute what what intel have yeah. you just got your piece of shit just <laughs> shut your mouth and fucking <laughs> shut up I hate them man I saw it once on the central line this, our train uh, yeah the tube got stuck at like St Paul's and uh, the, the announcer was like oh, we, uh, we're about to stop here because of a, a passenger incident down the line we should be moving in a bit sat there this geezer stands up proper cunt looking city geezer and he's got a pinstripe suit shiniest shoes ever seen looks like he's been working in the city for about 35 years with his fucking paper in his hand gets up starts looking up and down the fucking like sticking his head out of the tube looking up and down and sits back down again keeps doing it over and over again then he this geezer just minding his business working on the platform and he's like yeah mate um, just wondering, um, any chance this is going to be moving? You know, I've got somewhere to be. And the bloke turns around and he's like, yeah, no, I think everyone else has as well, mate. But, you know, whatever he said, that's what's going on. And it, this geezer just couldn't have cared less, you know what I mean? He's just turned back around. I think he was like dancing to like tunes or something while he's cleaning the platform. The guy's like, well, this is unacceptable. Can you find out what's going on? He goes, well, I don't know. I'll radio him if you want. So he radios this geezer. He goes, what's going on at the next station? He goes, oh, I think it's a red signal. He goes, oh, you said it's a red signal. He said it's a passenger incident. So which one is it? And the guy just turned around and went, what fucking difference does it yeah. make? Wait, I just walked out You're not again. going anywhere. I'm just sat there like, you're such a fucking job's worth. Like, and then by the time it's like properly round with the guy, they said, right, all doors shut in. Everyone's you sitting there. You should have pushed him off. Oh, mate. I just look, you know when you're just looking at everyone on the train looking at him, him like you're arse, a knob. 100% should have two-footed him in the arse. You seen that geezer that does the videos on the tube now where he gets a speaker? Yeah, yeah. And he, it, you just see the one when he's got like that crackhead-looking guy next to him and he goes, uh, TFL have said no Kansas Stella on the tube. No Kansas Stella, thank you. And the guy like puts his fucking can in his waistband. Yeah. <laughs> and then he's like, um, oh, yeah, he goes, oh, it's all right, I'll get off at Mill Hill in a bit. We've also been told this train will not be stopping at Mill Hill. <laughs> <laughs> He's funny, that guy. I never get them guys on the tube, the fun ones. I just get mad cunts, man. Well, that brings us to the story of last week. We got someone fun on the tube there. Oh, yeah, that was, that wasn't fun. That was, uh, <laughs> yeah, we should have got a medal, I reckon. Yeah, I was expecting. So basically what happened was um, someone tried to throw themselves on the tube line. Me and Joe came to the rescue, kind of. We don't want to sound like heroes, but... Yeah, I took more of a project management stance. On yeah, it, not all heroes wear capes. Some wear Arsene Wenger style North Face yeah. jackets. I I just basically went and told the staff, and then we got back down there, <laughs> and these. So what was he saying? Wait, what was he saying? I don't know. Cause cause I, Arabic, I don't know because the guy is. There was a Kurdish guy, two two big Romanian. <laughs> it was literally geezers, like an Englishman, a Romanian, and a Kurdish guy walking yeah. to a tube and I'll stop. I tell you what, it's a good job. Brexit what, were they together? Mate. Nah, just random donnies, but the one geezer was massive. Like I said, he worked in security. Me, he, what, he looked like he'd kill people. Yeah, like he was he was on it, man. So what, what was he doing? Literally just kept fucking pinning him he down. He was holding him down oh, with right. me. I was holding him down. One well, he couldn't hold him down on his own. Mate, the guy was, the guy was manic. wild, mate. The geezer, and then... Out of control. But you needed bare people to hold him down, because then he kept trying to bang his head off the floor, so then nice. some other geezer had to hold his head. Then he'd try and kick everyone while they were doing it to me and oh, Jay, no, you got a holding his legs. you got a kneel on his back. So yeah, he did. He was doing well, mate. It was all sorts. It was a mess. Yeah, it was. And, and any time he kept tr- tr- getting up, he kept trying to run back to the. And again, the staff just didn't really give a fuck. Did yeah, the, sta- the staff just stood there watching us. And then the guy was like, "So what's going on?" Then and some other geezer appears from the platform and he goes, uh, "We've had we've had the incident raised by one." 
And, I was like, <laughs> and, and, and like... this guy literally said to him, I've got to get to work. You better sort this out. Because if I let go of him and he dies, that's your job, not mine. And I was just like, they yeah, were these... nowhere near. They didn't want any part of them it. Yeah, maybe they're they... told not to, though. Them Eastern European nannies, they were losing patience rapid, but you know, God, they were. Godspeed. But too. at the same, yeah, at the yeah, same but, time. But, but, but hold on, hold on. Why didn't one of them just KO him? Because uh, I think they, like, I think they felt sorry for him. Yeah, like, it, would, it was, would, it was kind of sad as well. Yeah, and was, and, yeah, and yeah, the one geezer, the one geezer there could speak Arabic, but the geezer wasn't. This is the thing that I found fascinating. The geezer wasn't speaking full Arabic, and he wasn't speaking full whatever the fucking language Kurdish the other ones were talking because the guys were like oh the police are asking on the radio what he keeps saying and the guy said i don't really know it's really broken arabic and then he keeps speaking to these guys in some other in some other language i think romanian but i feel like if you showed the world the video of that then it would stop all the wars mm. do you mean collaboration between different countries you know what i find quite <laughs> interesting though from like a from like a social perspective as well <laughs> This uh, so there was there was this other woman who turned. Do you not up. think that would help? No, no, it wouldn't. No, it's not gonna stop. It's not gonna stop the war in Ukraine, Jason. The, but it, the, again, the thing that pissed me off is obviously everyone else. They were like, just get out the station, and this fucking one old jobs worth woman, is just stood there going, "Can you give him some space, please? Can you give this poor man some space?" And she's just belting it in my ear. And at this point, like fucking. Jason's on his one leg. I'm on his other leg. These other geezers are doing it. She's just down my Can you give him some space? I just turned around. And just went, can you fuck off? <laughs> Did you actually say that? Yeah, I was like, what are you doing? Like, what are you doing Did he there? Say that? So yeah. then she fucked fucking off. It got a bit heated, mate. And, but then a, everyone a left. Reasons. But the thing that was quite interesting from like a social perspective, because of all the videos you see on the internet that I found, was there was this one black geezer that stuck around for a bit. Like, you know, see like, the, the younger black lad? And he was watching it, and the guy that works there turned around and went, what's going on? And he was just like, I don't know, I've seen a lot of these situations. I just wanted to make sure it was all above board, you know what I mean? And they were like, oh yeah, he's meant that he tried to kill himself. And the geezer just went, all right, cool. <laughs> and just <laughs> left. And I was like, yeah. You know what, oh, fair enough. Oh, he thought you lot was like, Yeah, like he must have thought there was, he must have like had a little look to be like, yeah, not another one of these ones. And then and then the staff were like asking us, oh, is he one of your mates? Like, how do you know him? I'm like, yeah. well, none of us know this guy. We're just trying to like help him. Yeah. Yeah, it's mad. Did you not want updates? No. No, I wanted to be out of there. Oh, well, I looked on Twitter afterwards to see if anyone had tweeted anything about it. And it just said, uh, Wood Green Station closed due to passenger incident. Okay. That was or was it. it a red signal? Could have been. <laughs> Could have been. That's all it was, mate. Could have been, man. <laughs> TFL's on its knees, though, mate. You should have seen the geezer's face, though, because we got in there as the guy was going mad at the member of staff. <laughs> and, the, and and Jason's got, he's fucking nuts. And the member of staff's just gone to him, basically, just gone, just fuck off, mate. So he's gone down the escal escalators, and then that's happened. So when I've got to Jason, like, let's go fucking tell this geezer upstairs. Gone up there. <laughs> God, this one, mate. This someone on the tracks. <laughs> this guy just went. It's on the tracks. <laughs> Sprint. I said, I said, Stop that track. I don't want. I don't want to ruin your night, mate. But um, someone's on the tracks. Yeah, but then they go <laughs> stop. They go stop the trains. So then at one point the geezer tried running on the train tracks again, and I went, the trains ain't even coming anymore, bro. But they they just kept, they were still coming from the other way. Yeah, they were. And I was yeah. like, if it had a bit of nounce on him, he would have gone yeah. left instead of right. I don't know with the layout of the station, but can you get over to the other side, can you? Yeah, yeah. it's literally one and then the other. Yeah. With a, what, Next like to each other, in the middle. yeah, with just yeah. not even something in the middle, just a little hallway. Yeah. Oh. Just the foyer, mate. And you know what it was? It was scrapping. It was like, you know, the scene in The Matrix when they had the fart next to the train. Track. Yeah, yeah, it was like that. It was yeah, like all like bits flying off. So who shit. got him up from the track? I think the big, I think the big Romanian fella did. Yeah. Well, he went onto the track. Nah, no. he kept putting his arm out to get him. I think what happened when we got down there, I saw him jump back off the track. I think because the Romanian geezer started saying to him something about the police, and this geezer was like, "Nah, not the police." So then he jumped off the track. They've grabbed him rapid. Then he's obviously realised, "Oh fuck this!" Here. Yeah. Should have stayed on the tracks. So then he just kept trying to get back on it. I was trying to get him in like some kind of hold at one point. He was. Yeah, it was it was Wrigley. It was very Wrigley. It was Wrigley. Nah, what what you gotta do, yeah? You gotta get your heels on the ground with his legs either side of you, and then just bear hug him. He's gonna nut you that way though. Yeah. But, yeah. Oh, he was. Yeah, he was. He he's was a nut. He doing was a nut in time. You, but but yeah. yeah. Anyway, uh, God so, bless yeah. him. Hope he's all right. Yeah, yeah. hope he's he all right, sad. man. Well done, boys. Well done. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, I'll so, be, uh, hopefully get my MBE next year. Yeah, you won't. Um, <laughs> the police okay. took everyone's. What you will get? They got. 
<laughs> the police wanted to take everyone's name when they got there, but these Romanian geezers were like, I'm going to work. <laughs> so then I think the Kurdish geezer gave him the name, and then I looked on his notepad, but he was only taking first names. I was like, what are you going to do with that? You fucking idiot. Just put all the names in a report. It was, it's the whole thing. Lost. It, was a, it was a farce. It took him about a half hour to get there. Yeah, it was ridiculous. Well, I mean, hopefully you won't. It, I think it is suicide season now, isn't it? It's happened in Switzerland. I Someone it was dropped January. in front of my train. Mm. Yeah. Well, you can get it. You can get it done legally there as well, can't you? Yeah. Cost What's a it bit called? Uh, I think that's a. So do you know? So do you know if you commit suicide there, is it is it legal? No. No. Oh, so you've you got to be. be there's, a, there's a difference between suicide and being euthanized, doesn't it? Oh, that's okay. Like it's high there. The the rate of suicide is high. Is oh, it? Is it? Why yeah. is that? Same as Singapore. Yeah. I thought it would be nice because there's all there's like chocolate over there. Yeah, there's watches. watches. <laughs> Maybe because a sandwich and a coffee cost 15 quid. That Swiss Army true. knives. Do you want, do people no people, taxes. Do people kill each other with Swiss Army mm. knives? I don't know? think so. Nah. I think they just open cans with it. I think that's the whole point of the Swiss <laughs> yeah. Army knife. So, go on then. Smelly person, stand for 12 hours or lick his armpit I'm once sitting. and end it. You're going to sit with I him hate, and just I hate, pong it out. I, I just hate fucking You reckon you can up. sleep through it? I don't know, you know, because I sleep with my mouth open when I'm on the. Yeah, but you're plane. not going to smell if your mouth's open. Yeah, but you taste it. You won't taste it. Yeah, a hundred. Like, I'm talking the worst smell you can possibly imagine. No. I don't do too bad with really bad smells, you know. I don't know why. I know some people got proper sensitive noses. They don't like the smell of something and they're heaving. Yeah, I just don't really. I'm like that. Even if it's like a dog shits on the floor, I'm like. Bleh. Okay, so what are you doing? Are you sitting with him, standing, standing with him, or up, licking mate. his armpit once? Standing up and what, not even standing for armpit. 12 hours straight. No sitting down, no yeah. leaning, nothing. Yep. Yeah. Just going to stand there like a statue. What, you just going to oh, No, I'm allowed to walk. You told me I could yeah, walk you can around. Walk. Yeah, but then walk what, you can't watch hours. a film or nothing. You just got to look over someone's shoulder. No, and you can. Right you can hold your phone up and watch a film if you want. But you oh, can't lean on a wall and watch it. You sore neck looking I just do like some hardcore like steps. What, and then every time they go, we've got to take the trolley up again now. You've got to move out the way and go. I just have to slide in. Slide out. Slide in where? Into the spare seat. What, your spare seat? So you're still going to be interacting with that honking... No, man. he's not even on the plane. Is the honky man still on the plane? Yeah, yeah. he's still on the plane. But you're not near him. You can stand wherever you want. Okay, yeah. I'll just... I'd stand in the back with the food. At least what? I can chirp. Would the smell not travel? Nah. Well, Have you ever it... tried to chirp? So An air he chirps all of them on the flight I've, back from LA. I've tried. I don't remember any of this. Do you, you don't remember the flight back from LA? No. When you, you... I didn't want to wake you up for the meal... So you slept through it, and then you went. He went. Oh, I'm gonna go to the back and ask him if they've got any meals left. And then this geezer was gone for like 45 minutes, and he was like, "Oh, I've just paid friends with one of them." And I then at the end of it, they were like, "Oh yeah, have a lovely day." I don't remember any of this, you know. My yeah. memory's so bad. I've yeah. done it before, where I've like tried to chirp one, and then it, <laughs> and I was on the flight on my own. This is like years ago. I was on the flight on my own, and the woman next to me, I just got chatting to like a middle-aged woman, and then she was like egging me on. She was like. I think she really likes you. You should, you should like give her a number. You and you, you've got me. I got a girlfriend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just him. Then it got to the end of the flight, and I gave her my number. And I think she thought I was giving her a tip or something like that. So, so that's later, darling. <laughs> and then there was a really awkward exchange, and then I just walked off the flight. And then the worst thing was when I was getting my case later, like she walked past. She walked past, and you saw you take your fedora off like, the baggage. Oh. <laughs> Dora <laughs> Jason, like MJ <laughs> <laughs> in his Federline era. <laughs> oh mate, it was so embarrassing. Uh, and the worst thing was, I don't. It occurred to me after they don't have the real names on the. You're on the. Tags. They're not. I don't think they do. Do they? It's like when you work in retail, you don't have. People don't wear the real names on the name tags in case you can find out what their name yeah, is. Oh, I did when I worked in, in retail years ago. But for the, because you're desperate. For the, first, for the first two months, I had Ali on my name tag because of the geezer that worked there before and just no one asked any questions. Everyone was just like... Oh, yeah, I so I think from... that's what the air hostesses do. Or they have like understand. codes and stuff. Or maybe right? that's the reason why she didn't... That's the excuse that I keep have telling you, myself. Have you heard what this, the shit they do? I've heard like there's all sorts of like code names for like problematic people and stuff like that and, and, and shit like that. Oh, yeah, but like, oh, where you call some, yeah, that's what they do in retail, right? Where you have, where you like go on the radio and say there's a 0121 or something I'd, like I'd, that. I just used to, I used to hide in the stock room for hours. <laughs> yeah, I went out of an air hostess for a bit. She, she, she was a bit mental as well, actually. We, we literally chatted for like 20 minutes in a bar in Birmingham, and then 
I think me and my boy left to go one, one place and her and her mates left to go to the other. And then she just tracked me down on the internet like a month later just through this photo that her mate had took of the two of us talking. Yeah, mad. Mate, so Barbie, 29, a flight attendant from Argentina. That's not a real name. That was her one, is it? Is that the one That's that you're That's definitely on? not a real name, <laughs> is it? That's the one that was tracking Joe down. Nah, no, I'm not Barbie, man. <laughs> not from Brazil. I like the sound of Barbie. Sometimes flight attendants and pilots don't tell all the truth to passengers. <laughs> okay. What? <laughs> don't worry about the masks that have just come down from the <laughs> yeah. ceiling. It's absolutely fine. Flight attendants love turbulence because we can rest a little bit. Nah, you know, you know the thing. No, I want to know, like, you know, when they think like someone's hot, they say something. Yeah, you know the thing with turbulence that I always think is like, I never worry about it too much because I always think, ah, oh, well, the pilot wants to get home as well. You know what I mean? So don't worry about it. But you know, when you start seeing the staff panicking, that's when I'm like, oh, it's a bit of a sticky. Yeah, I, yeah. I, they go through it all the time. Yeah, not for me. I don't like flying too much. Do you not? Nah, it's the, I get too... My, my legs and my back hurt because there's never enough leg room. And yeah, that's a real problem shit. for me. A real problem. It's just long. Raj was fucking swinging his feet, man. Like, ah. <laughs> oh, like he's in a high chair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here we go. Uh, they re- reused the headphones. Yeah, that doesn't surprise oh, me. Oh, did it? What, did they just give him a quick wipe? Probably just chuck them back in the bag. Oh, uh, I bet they, they'll reuse the blankets and all sorts. The champagne goes down the toilet. What, if it's not used? Yeah, before touchdown, all the drinks uh, dumped in toilets. What do you mean? All of them? If it's not open. If it's it. opened, yeah. Oh, well, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, people fake being ill to get an upgrade. Oh, that's the one. If someone dies, they're just left there. They're just left in their seat. If someone dies next to you, they're just left there. Okay, I thought they put them in like the luggage hold. Like, car. Huh? <laughs> Like cargo, That's bro. That's what they do in Con Air, You bro. think it would do because it's cold down there, isn't yeah. it? So it would keep the, it would preserve them. Yeah. Did you have you heard that as well before? It's like on any flight that you get, like there could very well be a dead body in the cargo hold at any at any given time because oh, really? they'll just use commercial flights for repatriated bodies. Really? Didn't realize yeah, yeah. that. Because yeah, it's like, well, they they go in there anyway, so you may as well and just stick them in there. Yeah, it's mad. Do you know what? I dropped my phone. <laughs> do you reckon they ever lose the luggage on them? <laughs> Yeah, imagine. <laughs> Fucking hell. Absolutely mad. Did I tell you this? I told him that when he'd lost his luggage in New York. I didn't when, lose um, it. When they lost it. It just never came from Heathrow. But uh, I told him this story. When I was in Egypt, there was this Australian girl. And uh, she her luggage just didn't turn up in Cairo. And um, she was like trying to figure out where it was and that. And this tour guide that we had was like constantly on the phone to the people at Cairo airport because she was like I can't speak Arabic so I ain't got a fucking clue what's going on so every day just have a different update for some reason it got sent to like somewhere in Canada rather than Cairo so then he was like yeah they've got a flight somewhere else and then they're gonna fly it here and then whatever and then when we get back to Cairo you'll have your bags back so she keeps getting this update every day and then the one day he comes off the phone, he just starts laughing and she goes, Wow, what's happened now? He goes, Nah, it's 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 progress, but you're just not gonna believe me when I tell you. <laughs> and she goes, Go on there. And he goes, So basically, it's on its way to Cairo, but they've just had to get it into Africa first. So when I rang him up and said, Where's this girl's luggage? They said, Oh, it's just landed in Timbuktu. <laughs> <laughs> but she got it back. It was a happy ending for everyone involved. I got mine back. Yeah. Next day. This geezer rolls up first night in New York in a tracksuit at the pub. And the geezer just looks him up and down and he goes, oh, I, only got, I only got here an hour ago and I didn't have, didn't have my luggage. It's like, I respect that you came out. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man, if someone dies next to you, they're just left there. Yeah, it's a bit like in, um, what's that Arnold Schwarzenegger film when he kills the geezer in the seat and then puts the blanket over him and goes, excuse my friend, he's dead tired. <laughs> it's like that. Good film. What would you do though? What, so, what I'd, film I'd, is I'd that? I'd probably stand up with Jason if someone was dead next to him. I'd draw the line at a corpse. <laughs> or I'll ask can I have his meal. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be good. Have you ever have you been on a flight where they've done the whole, is, it, is, is there a doctor on board? No. I had that once flying to Thailand and uh, one of my mates I was with was a paramedic. And he went, nah. No, not a doctor. Yeah, not today. Nah, but he was there. But he was like <laughs> very highly trained in all like emergency. But he just went, nah, there'll be one. 
there's gonna be I mean, if someone died next to me and that, like they had a fucking neck pillow and shit, I'd be like, well, you don't need that anymore. <laughs> let, me, let me have that. I'd be going through the pockets. Set their AirPod Pro Max. <laughs> yeah, you don't need that watch. You, <laughs> you can't. That. You don't. You don't time's not. That. Time means nothing to you anymore. You've run out. I'll take that watch. My mate, fucking. <laughs> My mate jacked a geezer's chain that went in the back of a taxi. Because <laughs> this geezer, we were getting a taxi. Was ta- he dead? Nah, we were getting worse, <laughs> worse, mate. We were getting, me and my boy were getting a taxi back, Birmingham City Centre. Just back to fucking drop everyone off. Just me and him. And it, as we're getting in the taxi, this geezer comes running out the bar. And it's one of my boy's cousins. And he go, and I, I said to him, I said, you fucking, why did you say yes? He's literally carrying one of his boys out. We've never met this geezer before. He goes, I'll do me a favour, get him home, man. He's just had a bit too much to drink. So my boy goes, yeah, yeah, go on. Chucks him in the taxi. The taxi hasn't even got round the corner. The geezer's already throwing up in the fucking footwell. And the taxi driver's going, what's going on back there? Is he being sick? And we're like, nah, 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 he's not being sick. He's not being sick. My boy's like, I ain't paying for this fucking valeting service or whatever. Fuck that, fuck that. What are we going to do? Literally about two minutes later, we hear the geezer go, but he literally goes, and this geezer just shit himself and like he's drank that much he's thrown up everywhere and he shit himself my boy just goes fuck this he goes to the taxi driver he goes oh I forgot something do me a favour pull over here Yeah, that was embarrassing. I reminded him of it a few months ago, and he was like, "Yeah, I can't believe I did that. I was just pissed off." Bro. Was like, a man shat himself next to me in the taxi. I was like, yeah, horrid. Fucking hell. Horrid. Birmingham man, city of culture. Right. All right. So you're you're sitting next to Smelly Man. Yeah. You are standing. What are you doing? I think I would sit down next to you. Mm-hmm. Twelve hours mm-hmm. too long to stand. I got restless legs as well. Be bouncing up and down. Fuck that shit. No. But I am snitching. I'm yeah. trying to get upgrade for sure. That's fair. All right, wrap it up. Tweet. Uh, thanks for listening. I... Appreciate it. Do, do, do. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Tara. See you later. Bye bye. Peace. This has been the Word on the Streets. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share.